<laughs> Golden, what are you doing? I'm playing with my yo-yo. Is this what happens when you leave college early? Yeah, you learn a yo-yo and people who graduate from Texas call us boss. Watch my trick. <laughs> Good morning, and welcome back to Wake Up With Whistle, presented by Wendy's Breakfast. I'm Jack Settleman, joined by the man who doesn't need the luck of the Irish. But it certainly helps. That it does. He's your sure-handed wide receiver that every quarterback loves. It's Mr. Golden Tate. Whoa, whoa, buddy. It's Mr. Showtime Tate. Two loose on Tate. Showtime, it's Mr. Showtime, Golden Tate. Golden, are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. You're not ready. I'm ready. Uh, Say it with the chest. Say it with the chest, bacon man. Bacon on three. One, two, three, bacon! bacon! Welcome to Jack's Morning Joe, hitting you with a strong dose of Jack early in the morning. Here's my hottest takes on the college football season. Starting with my biggest surprises, I found out that the Big Ten has 14 teams. I'm mind blown. And then I found out that the Big 12 only has 10 teams. So where are the other two teams? Now I'm shocked to find out that Notre Dame still is not in a conference. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't need to be in a conference. We're independent yeah. and we have like the strongest schedule in all of football. <laughs> now for my biggest disappointments. Number one, speed. Where was the speed? in the Oklahoma State running back. He almost caught the edge. He almost got in for the touchdown. He almost dives in, but he is just short. And Oklahoma State, with their chance to go to their first CFP, falls inches short. Number two, what happened to loyalty? Lincoln Riley, in the middle of the night, goes off to his surf lodge in California. And Brian Kelly, Notre Dame still had a chance to get into the playoff, but he was off jet setting down to Louisiana. Where's the loyalty, coaches? Number three, in a wild college football year where Oklahoma didn't win the Big 12, where Clemson looked like just any other team, and Ohio State finally got down by Michigan. Michigan defeats Ohio State. How did Alabama end up number one in the country? And that is Jack's Morning Joe. It's time for our bacon or sausage biscuit segment, where I get to ask Golden his expert opinion on would you rather. Golden, would you rather? Sausage. I already know the answer. That's not the question, Oh, but a good answer. Would you rather be the star quarterback on a six and six football team or QB two on a national champion? That's a no brainer for me. I'm picking QB two on a national champion team. Wouldn't you rather be QB1? You walk through campus, everyone knows your name, you're famous around your college town? Look, if you're a quarterback, you're getting a lot of attention, point blank in the story. But like, as far as legacy, week in and week out, you're preparing the defense um, for their challenges, and you're trying to just torch them and get them ready. And also, your extra set of eyes for the starting quarterback, so you play a huge part. You tell your kids and your grandkids that, yeah, I got a national championship ring, and I went to the White House. I'm gonna get married and get my own ring and be the star quarterback. But that wasn't an option. <laughs> You're on a six and six team. College game day's not coming to see you regardless. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't you know about being the star on an average team? Oh, you went for the jugular, huh? But here you go, I'm gonna up you one. Yeah, maybe you're right, but at home, I got the best receiver trophy in college football on a mediocre team. Take that, drops the mic. That's a football. This is our pregame ritual and reflection segment where we get to talk to Golden about his most special moments in his college career. Golden, what do you got for me? Oh, I got a good one. 2009 robbery game against USC. We're at home. I caught two touchdowns. Playing USC has always been one of my favorite games. And it's simple because without the USC games, I might not have been drafted by Pete Carroll later on in my career. So you're saying Pete Carroll saw you torch his own team and said, I need that guy in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, and it worked out. What is it about rivalry games? What makes them so important in college football? I mean, it's their tradition behind it. And in our case, we were hearing the fight song of USC all week 
long. It was the crowd noise. Yeah, and I could just dun 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 Oh my goodness. Ugh. When you scored those two touchdowns in a rivalry game, they're different feeling, a heightened high that you get. You get caught up in the moment. Um, the atmosphere or being late in the day, the student section against USC. And I remember um, Taylor Mays, who was a big time hitter, but man, catching touchdowns and performing in Notre Dame Stadium is, is something that I'll never, ever forget. That's what makes you a Notre Dame legend. You show up the brightest in the biggest games. Like a true Golden Domer. Welcome back to For All the Bacon Trivia, where Golden and I compete head to head in a speed round answering college football trivia and testing our accuracy skills. I lost round two, I beat Golden in round one, but round three will be for all the marbles. Are you ready? I prefer fish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this thing. Here we go. Bedlam is what happens when these two in-state schools play. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Correct. Woo. Smokey is the mascot of this Texas. school. Texas. No, Tennessee. <laughs> Got a little arrogant there, huh? <laughs> the College Football Hall of Fame is located in this capital city. College Football Hall of Fame is in Nashville? No, it's in Atlanta, but when I was in college, it was actually in South Bend. Wow. Oh, no. In 2007, this school from Boone, North Carolina, pulled off one of the biggest upsets in all time, beating Michigan. Appalachian State. Yeah. Three points. The fan base of this SEC school claims they have never lost a party in the Grove. Oh, Miss Revel. That's right. Which group of five team has a home turf that is notoriously blue? Boise State. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm heating up. What is the mascot of the Conference USA member UT San Antonio? Patriot? No, it's a road runner. Ah, is that our next costume? It could be. What song does Virginia Tech play to pump up the home crowd? Oh, it's something with sand. I know there's Enter Sandman and there's Sandstorm. South Carolina's the other. Enter Sandman. Correct! Woo! Good job. That was a good round. You ready for yours? I think I am. Let's go. What team has the most appearances in the college football playoff without recording a victory? Is it us, Notre Dame? Oklahoma, four appearances. Oh, geez. Good shot. What year was the first college football playoff? It was a 2018? Mm. 2014. It's been that many years? Yeah. Holy cow. This school is known for endless uniform combinations. Oregon? That's correct. Yeah, because they get Mikey. Which rivalry game is held annually at a neutral site in Dallas? I don't know, is it Texas, Oklahoma? That's correct. The Red River Showdown. Which state has the most D1 football teams? Florida. Texas, Texas with 12. Jeez, 12. 12 teams. This school is commonly referred to as the Bayou Bengals. Name it. Down by the bay. Hmm, is it LSU? That's correct. All right, this one's coming down to the wire. This school's fan base uses the tomahawk chop to intimidate opposing teams. The tomahawk chop. Oh, I don't really know this one. Uh, Florida State. That's correct. Ooh. Ooh. All right, clutch throw. Here we go. The final question. You get this correct and make it, you win. Don't do that and you lose. Uh-oh. Are you ready? I'm ready. Which Big 12 school is located in Ames, Iowa? Okay, uh, it's, it's gotta be Iowa State. That's correct. All right. For all the bacon. <laughs> Woohoo! Man, man, yes! How did I lose that? Well, Golden, looks like you're the champion of For All the Bacon. Now, tell me, what's my ultimate penalty? We'll see soon. Is this my punishment, Golden? Part of it. What's the other half? <laughs> Is
It's time to line up for one final play on our fourth and goal segment. Golden, who is bringing home the bacon? Look, it's gonna be a usual suspect. Someone we expect to be there with a lot of tradition, that wins a bunch of games, and it's, it's, it's easy. It's Notre Dame. Notre Dame? What about good teams like Alabama and Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State? I mean, yeah, those are all good teams, but Notre Dame is great. <sighs> Here's the actual suspects. Alabama will roll over Cincinnati. And while I hope Cincy pulls all the tricks out of the bag, throws the kitchen sink and everything, and Desmond Ritter shows the country why he is a star, Alabama will simply be too much for the Bearcats. Meanwhile, Michigan's stout defense should give Georgia's offense some problems. But let's be real here. These are the Georgia Bulldogs, the SEC's best defense. They're going to stifle Michigan's run game and advance for an SEC championship rematch. But in that rematch, the curse of Georgia is broken because we already saw the Braves take it home this season and now the Bulldogs get their revenge on the tide and Georgia is crowned the national champion. The heat is on and the stakes have never been higher as we gear up for this playoff run. So we thank you for watching Wake Up With Whistle presented by Wendy's Breakfast.